Hi everyone, this is Peter here. Today's topic is going to be abstract macros and fine art macro photography. I will share a few tips on how I create this kind of imagery, what I tend to look for in my subjects and overall just what's the essence of it all and hopefully it will improve your own photography as well. So let's get into it. The majority of the time when I end up shooting abstract macros is when I notice interesting patterns or textures in nature. Shooting close-ups is a great way to isolate your subjects, to focus on just a few elements or a single focal point to highlight certain properties that you find unique and worth exploring visually. This can be, for example, a backlit shot of the veins of a leaf. I've always been drawn to this particular subject as no two leaves are ever the same. The first three shots were taken at a lower magnification with the Canon 100mm macro at 1 to 1 magnification. All of these images are stacked shots and were shot in a studio environment where it was easier to control the light and with the use of a macro rail the focus stacking process was much more precise as well. If you'd like to learn in depth on how I do focus stacking then you will find links to all the relevant videos in the description. The last frame was shot at a significantly higher magnification ratio and I used the Laowa 25mm ultra macro lens which can shoot up to 5x. In this extreme close-up you can see all those tiny, almost spiderweb-like filaments that connect the decaying tissue and veins of this autumn leaf which looks really cool. One key aspect that I always try to ensure is that visual balance is achieved when I frame up these shots. The single most important factor that I take into consideration is simplicity. If certain elements are potentially distracting the viewer from the focal point, then I will always try to experiment with different perspectives for more optimal compositions or if necessary, crop in post or clean up the image with the clone stamp and healing brush tool for example, but only if none of the previous options are available. When I compose my shots, I love to create contrast and dynamism between elements within the frame and one way to do that is by the use of diagonal lines. For example, in this extreme close-up of a leaf vein where the almost leathery texture of the bram pad is broken up by the green tissue that leads in from the lower right corner of the image demonstrates this concept as well. This diagonal framing is also apparent in this following shot that I took of the urticating hairs of a caterpillar. This is just a single frame and in this instance the relatively shallow depth of field works in my opinion as it creates contrast between the soft out of focus background and the really sharp textural detail of the hairs. The next couple of macros show the tiny seed pods that make up the fruit of a Swiss cheese plant. The first one is of a healthy fruit with the vibrant green hexagon shaped pods that are considerably shrunken in this dried fruit. I've always been drawn to the repetitive nature of these geometric elements that one can find in nature. That's why I also really enjoyed shooting this beautiful lichen that I found in our backyard growing on the fig tree. The rich, vibrant colors and the texture in some of these shots reminded me of corals. This next image, which shows aquatic fern, I decided to shoot quite underexposed to turn the water essentially black for more separation of the subject from the background, which makes the pieces of the fern look as if they were floating. Another favorite subject of mine which can be fun to explore as a potential theme for abstract macro are water droplets. In this handheld shot which was taken at about 0.5 to 1 magnification you can see a myriad of water droplets of different sizes and what really works for me besides the contrast of the black background and the rich green color are those striations on the surface of the blade of grass which creates a kind of second layer of contrast which is between the substrate and the smooth perfect little pearls of water. This contrast can sometimes be further increased when you convert your shots into monochrome. The single most important factor that I tend to take into consideration when I decide to go for a black and white frame is whether color would elevate the image or not and how much the lack of color would enhance the textural detail. If color doesn't add much to your image then it might be a good idea to experiment shooting your subject in black and white as it allows you to focus on just certain properties of your focal point. 
In these last three single shots, which are of tiny water droplets on cobweb, the colors would have been quite distracting in the background, but going with grayscale simplifies and allows the viewer to only focus on these floating little spheres that almost look like atoms in a nanostructure. I also wanted to share just a few more abstract macros of insects that you might draw inspiration from. The first two images were extreme stack shots consisting well over 50 frames and captured at 3.5 and 4x magnification respectively. What you can see here are the scale-like structures and the CT that made up the wing of a moth specimen. Once again, if you'd like to know how I created these shots, then you will find the relevant video in the description. This following photo shows the beautiful iridescent blue wing of a flower wasp I stumbled upon in a driveway. It was relatively docile and was moving slowly, so I managed to grab this extreme close-up. I left one of my most detailed shots of a blue butterfly for last, which is one of my favorites. This one was taken at 4x magnification with the Laowa 25mm ultra macro lens and shows tremendous amount of intricate detail of the wing structure and those tiny hairs and the metallic iridescent colors of its body are also quite striking in my opinion. Anyway, this is it for today. I hope you found some of these tips useful. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. I've got heaps of macro content for you to check out. Thanks again for watching and see you all very soon in the next one.